right, this is some uh, taro I got from Thomas Share Market. Hawaiian taro, $1.98 a pound. So some of this taro has a little bit of mold on it. It's okay. As long as you don't get a ton of mold, uh, you can still cook it up and it's just as good. So this is about four pounds worth of taro. All right, this is our pressure cooker. You can see it's got some kind of rubber gasket there. Top. A little device here to maintain the pressure. And I'm just going to put a couple of things in here so that I can raise the tire up a little. So I'm going to put about an inch of water in there. I'm do that now. All right, here you can see I just uh, can fit only three of the taro in. I just gave them a really quick rinse. You don't have to rinse them really good. And you don't want to touch them too much because your hands are going to get itchy. So I just put it in with about an inch of water. And I have a couple of things on the bottom here just to raise it up a little bit so the taro's not on the bottom of the pan. Cover it up. And then I'm just going to pressure cook this for about, it's so hard to do one hand, I'm holding the phone and recording. Ah, there we go. And I'm just going to cook this up for about uh, 40 minutes. This is what it looks like. I'm going to get that closed and snap it together. And make sure that you've got something on the top like this. While the taro is cooking, this is our KitchenAid mixer. Got it out. It comes with three attachments. I think you can use any one of these to mash up the taro. I've used this one before and it did a pretty good job. I've used this one before. Did a decent job. Got all stuck in here though, so I wouldn't recommend using that. And I haven't used this bread hook one yet for really pounding it in, so I'm going to use this one today. But any one will work. So, just stick this bowl in. It locks into place. And then once the taro's ready, I'm going to get it cleaned up and stick it in here. Right here, the taro's cooking in our pressure cooker. Our pressure cookers cook it pretty quickly. It's about 30 minutes or so you can cook up taro. If you bake it or if you steam it, it may take an hour, an hour and a half. You want to cook it so that you can poke it with a fork, just like a potato. If you do use a pressure cooker, you want to really make sure you read the instructions and know what you're doing because these uh, things cook under high pressure and you can get hurt if you don't secure it correctly or put it together the right way. So I can actually start smelling it now. It smells really nice. And I've got this on um, medium high and I'm going to cook this for about 30 minutes and then let it cool down and then test. It should be ready by then. Alright, this is done. In the top really carefully. First I let the steam come out and then you just do the fork test and poke it in. And it should go right in. It's like a potato. This is done. That's done. So these just need to be cooled for a little while and we can start making poi. Alright, the last two are being steamed there and I cool one. So all you gotta do is get a butter knife and you want to get this out here. All the skin off and any kind of brown spots you want to dig out. Make sure you compost your stuff. You're going to get a spoon or a knife and scrape it. And make it look like this. Make it look really clean. And then chop this up into cubes. There we go. That's cubed up. You can hear the last two screaming in there, hissing. So you just have to cube up the column. Stick it in the mixer. That. Alright. And focus. There we go. And I'm going to use this bread hook. Lock it in. And we'll start it off slow. And as that gets mixed up, then you just increase the speed. And it's not going to pound it like a paiai or traditional boy. And you're going to really need to get a, a stone for that, but this gets it pretty close. And I don't add water, because I like to keep it thick. But if you want it to be poi, then you got to add water at some point. Use that. Just then take a wooden spoon and sort of help it along the way. And probably beat it down for, I don't know, 20 minutes or so. 15, 20 minutes. Alright, this is what it looks like after about 5 minutes. You can see it's getting close to... Ready. So I'm going to make poi patties with this. You just 
but make them into balls and then you can fry them in butter. There's one more left there. Sure what this looks like when you're going at high speed. And you can't over mix this, so you can just keep going and going at it as long as you can. It's never going to be the same as hand pounded, but you're going to get pretty close. See that? That's actually ready. So if I added water to this and started mixing it slowly, then I would get poi. Alright, this is good enough for me. You can see it's super thick. And with about one to one of water, this will turn into poi. Alright, this is what those poi patties look like. Just fry them in some butter. And they look like that. They're yummy, they're chewy, and they taste like poi. And so, just use a little bit of wheat flour just to make sure they don't stick in my hand. And made them into patties. Fry them in butter. Mm -hmm -hmm. Alright, to turn this into poi, just take some water. Dump it in. Start it on slow. Mix it up. So it's looking like my like boy already. It. You can see it just needs to be mixed up a bit. And then this will be just as good as poi. And what I like to do is make a whole bunch of this and I freeze them so I can make poi pancakes on Sundays. So that's it. I hope this was helpful. Alright, this is how it looks like this poi. So a little lumpy in some spots, but if you just Work it for longer before you add water. You can get this just like the poi at the store. Yummy stuff. Oh, and in case you're wondering, about four pounds of taro makes all of these taro patties, plus about this much poi. So, pretty good size container. Good chunk of taro.